Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know the video like footage right here is a little different. The quality might be a little different. I don't know if you can see it, but I can definitely notice I'm filming on my phone, just my intro, but I just wanted to say welcome to my channel if you guys are new and if you're a returning subscriber, thanks for always coming back. Y'all are the best. My name's Asia Monet and I just wanted to share with you guys how I keep track of my sales, how I keep track of my inventory. I was requested, this video was requested by so many people. I'm just kidding, no it wasn't. It was requested by one person and I'm here for you guys. So I just wanted to go ahead and put this video together for you guys really quickly and I hope that this helps somebody. Just remember that if you're smaller, if you sell, if you're like a bigger business than me, then this might not work for you. But I do have like around 300, 350 active listings. That's my goal. If you're someone who sells about, I don't know, like 100 packages a day. I do talk about my screen recording, what you can do differently if you are that person. So yeah, if you guys wanna see what I do and all that jazz, then keep on watching. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and start with my inventory just because I feel like it's easier. So I do my inventory on Google Sheets. I actually was doing it on Excel, but for the sake of this video, I knew a lot of people probably don't have access to Excel and people probably don't want to pay for Excel. It is kind of pricey. I got it free with my school since I'm a student, so I just switched over to Google Sheets. So here's my inventory right here. And the way I keep track of it is I do men's, women's, children's, and then I have bad inventory that I need to redonate and unlist the inventory. Okay, so for the video, I'll just show you guys my women's inventory. And I blacked out where I sourced from and also the price paid just because, you know, I want to keep that a secret. So here on the women's, now if you have more inventory, I have about 300 or so active listings. So if you have way more than that, you can always break this up in different tabs like women's tops, women's bottoms, women's dresses. I just do it all on one sheet here. So I start with, you know, the tops. I'll write down the number or the item of the top or the item of the the name of the item, Jesus Asia. Okay, the name of the item, the brand, and then I also do where I source from, how much I paid for it, and then the day I listed it. Not necessarily the day I purchased it, but the day I listed it. Any notes, so sometimes I'll have two of the same item, but they might be different colors, so I'll put like blue or black, whatever you want. This E here means that I recently added these items to eBay auction. And any item that's highlighted just means that I've had it for more than three months and I'm trying to get rid of it, move it out. Here is where I keep track of my days, weeks, and months. So you obviously don't have to keep track of all three. I just decided to do this for the video so you guys can see how to do it. There is a formula. So for days, if you want to do days, I just feel like it'd be easier to do weeks or months, but obviously with some items like here for incident instance i listed it two days ago so clearly this would be zero zero so days are kind of helpful so for this you're just going to want to enter in this formula here and i will also include it on the screen for you guys but you, this is basically this basically will take the time that has elapsed from the day you listed it to today's date so make sure your computer date is accurate or these numbers will be all wrong that's how you get the days in order to get the weeks you simply just take this number divide it by seven because there's seven days in a week so here's the formula equals sum h2 which is the days divided by seven i'll have that on the screen for you guys as well and then for months it's the same formula as days except you change the d to an m that's how you're going to get your months and that's really it. That's all I do for my inventory, how to keep track of it. And I'm so glad I switched over to Google Docs because you can also download the app and have this sheet on your phone. That way you're not constantly running back to your computer. So here, I haven't added all of the items. I have a big old bag that I need to take to the thrift store. But for now, 
I just added three because I just started this list. These are items that I've gotten that just wasn't up to par. Like I've gotten some, these two I got from a mystery box that I was just like, I'm not listing. So I added those into my pile that I'm going to send back to the thrift store or just throw away. Then there's a couple of items that I, like this for instance, I got it. I actually wore it once and it was just shedding so bad the first time I wore it. I was like, you know, I'm not selling that to anybody. So basically anything that I've purchased, couldn't fix and or just decided not to sell, I will put here. And you can have a running total of all the items for yourself. And this is good for your taxes. The way to do that is you're just going to hit equal sign, going to hit the sum, open parentheses, and then just click and drag all the way down to wherever you want to stop, hit enter, and there's your price. I also keep track of my unlisted inventory just because I like to keep track of where I got the item from, how much I paid for it. That way I'm not, when I'm listing, I'm not like, oh my God, how much did I pay for this? I completely forgot. So I do that. Any item with a blue means I've already photographed it. It just not has been listed yet. So as they list or as I list them, I just drag, I will cut it and then go over to wherever it belongs and paste it into the correct spot. That is seriously it for my inventory. That's how I keep track of it. So now on to my spreadsheet. I have a lot of tabs, you guys, a lot of tabs. So let's just start with, let's do um, July. July looks good. So for July, I'm showing you guys this because it's already passed. I really don't care if you see the numbers, it is what it is. Okay, so we're in July. Right now, I'm just make this big so you guys can see what's going on here. So here's some things that I keep track of. Obviously, when things sell, I write down a short description of the item. Uh, so I'll put that here. I put the date that it sold, the platform, how much it sold for. And then these are my different fees. So the, the bank fee is for when I sell on eBay. So clearly, I didn't sell anything on eBay for this month. And then that'd be the PayPal fee. The shipping fee is if I offer shipping discount to likers on Poshmark. And then the shipping fee that I put in eBay. I'll just explain the eBay section after. I'll just do the Poshmark for now. So there won't be any banking fee for Poshmark. So if you're just doing Poshmark, you could just ignore this tab. But the shipping fee and then also the overall fee that it costs to sell on Poshmark, which is 20%. So the reason why I break up my fees is because the different fees mean something different when you're filing your taxes. So it's just easier to go ahead and break them out to begin with than having to go back when I'm filing my taxes, trying to figure out what fee is what. So that's why I break it up. And then my earnings, I have a formula here is just subtracting these three boxes from my sold amount. And then I have my cost of goods. All you do is just enter your cost of goods from your inventory sheet and your profits would just be your earnings minus your cost of goods. The reason why I use an, a formula is because you can literally just Put the formula in once here, hit this little thing until the, what is this, uh, a cross comes up and drag and drop and it will make the entire formula down the entire row. So just so you guys can see what I'm talking about, I'll do an example. Let's put it right there. Can item. So let's say I sold a J. Crew black dress. And it's so today, so today is the 24th of October, and it sold on Poshmark. Let's say I sold it for $50, and obviously there's no bank fee for Poshmark, so you can just leave a blank or you can put $0. Shipping fee, let's say I offered $4.99 ship to the buyers, so I paid one, $150. 
my fees would be so equal signs sum open expert open parentheses the total amount times 20% equals so that's ten dollars twenty percent of five is ten dollars that's how much Poshmark's going to take out okay so my earnings will be some open rent these fifty dollars minus if you're just doing Poshmark you're not even gonna have this one this column here so I'll just go ahead and skip that so minus your shipping fee and then minus your fee fee I always call it fee fee but the 20% you're gonna hit enter and there you go $38.50 that is what will be deposited into your account and let's just say you paid a dollar for this so obviously you know it's gonna be $37.50 but if you want to do the formula it'll just be your earnings minus your cost of goods enter and that's what it is so from here you're just going to want to take your earnings drag this down and then drag your profit down that way all of these have the same formula so now let's move on to the next item let's say we sold a Vince hoodie men's hoodie and this sold today as well October 24th so um Poshmark and let's say that sold for let's do 120 we, we made a lot of money today let's do 120 and let's say you were feeling nice and you wanted to do free shipping 6.99 all right so oh here you go I'm sorry you can drag this one down as well see so 20% of 120 is $24 and you see it automatically filled in your earnings and obviously this isn't your profit you have to put in what you paid for it so let's say you paid up for this Vince hoodie because you knew it would sell for $120 so let's say you paid $10 for that boom there you go and I'll just show you guys one more example if I was to sell a bundle item this is how I do it so I'm going to let's say we sold three items in our bundle we did a j crew graphic t and i decided to sell hmm what did i sell let's say a nike tight some nike tights and last item we wanted to sell in this bundle were some well let's do chucks we sold some chucks and let's say they were red and they sold today in october and we sold this on poshmark and for our bundle let's say we were feeling really nice because we sold the vent city for 120 so we wanted to give them a deal on all of this so we only sold it for 50 bucks and you see how it automatic automatically puts in these formulas for you but let's just say we did $1.50 shipping and for my cost of goods here how I do it is I will take each cost of good of each item and just add it up and total the amount. So for all five I or all three items, let's say I paid five sixty five for it, and this will be our profit. And to get your totals for all of these items, you can just simply hit where start here equals sum open parentheses drag all the way down enter and you can drag this formula across and it'll add everything up for you it's really simple to set up your spreadsheet um these formulas will also work in google sheets i just i really do like excel that's why i like to use it and i'm just comfortable with excel but that is how you set up your spreadsheet there that's that's it and the other column that I have is 
state. I keep track of what state I sell to just because the new laws that might be coming out as far as you have to collect sales tax or pay sales tax for different states than what you live in. So I obviously live in Washington. This was just why it's highlighted. Well, I guess that's not obvious, but I live in Washington, if you guys didn't know. And so that's why it's highlighted. And also on my spreadsheet here, I like to keep track of where I travel to. So whenever I go sourcing, so I went to the Goodwill Bins, I went to Village or Value Village. I also went to a couple other places. So I like to keep track of where I go sourcing and I will keep a running total of how much I spent right here. You just do the same for formula, equal sum, drag and drop, and it'll give you your total. I also keep track of my miles for the month on the same spreadsheet. So all of these locations start from my house and they end at my house. Sometimes I will go to a certain area, I will go to a certain place and then decide that I need to, you know, go run other errands that have nothing to do with my business. So I'll just start it from my house and end it wherever I was going, but I won't make it a round trip. So these are my miles and then I just add them all up at the end. And then I also keep track of other expenses. So like I had an Uber ride to AM Vets. I was in San Diego. I was stuck in the hotel when my husband's at work. I wanted to go thrifting a little. But that's how I keep track of my stuff for Strictly Poshmark. And when it comes to eBay, let's go to September. I had a little bit more eBay sales. But as you can see, this right here are my PayPal fees. And so that's why you need the bank fee. But just because I can keep track of, or I like to keep track of all my items that sold on a daily basis. So as you see, 1st of September, 3rd, 4th, 5th, it's in chronological order. I like to do that because I don't sell that much to where I need to keep track of each day's sales. So if I was selling so much money or money, if I was selling so many items to where it would be a hassle for me to keep track of every single item that sold, you can always do the same type of spreadsheet idea, but do it as far as like just one day. So for the 1st of June. Add up all your total sales, all your fees, all your earnings, cost of goods, and then you'll get your total profit for the day. It might come a little um, confusing when it's time for you to keep track of your sell state, but I'm sure there's a way you can do that. You can always keep track of, or you can always do a printout. Poshmark, when you print out all your, your sales report, Poshmark will give you the state that it sells to. It's just when I do shipping, so here's October, like when I do shipping, I like to automatically write in where this item's going. It's just easier than having to print out the entire sheet and go back. I wanted to show you guys something else really quickly. You can also go to filters, where is it? Your data tab right here, go to filters, and you can see what was your, you know, highest earning profit here. Like, so obviously this is for Excel, but I'm sure on Google Sheets, you can do the exact same thing. So you're just going to go to choose one and top 10. So my top 10 items for this month so far have been, obviously they're not in order, but I can put them in order. So my top item earning wise has been this Nordstrom Cashmere jacket which I sold for 80 bucks or 100 bucks my earnings were 80 and then like this Kate Spade wallet and the French connection dress a coach vintage purse you can always just do that and it will just hit this filter and it'll go right back to where it was I also do quarterly overviews on my spreadsheet so I literally would just take basically all these fees at the bottom my total fees here da, 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 for the quarter and just put them in here. So May, June, I started in May, which is why there's no April, but May and June. And you just write down all your information and add all the information up. That way you have a snapshot of it. 
But I also, which just, you don't have to do this, but I also like to keep track of my yearly snapshot here. So this is first quarter, or second quarter, third quarter, and then when fourth quarter is over, I'm gonna put fourth quarter here. That way I can get my entire, like, numbers, my entire year, 2018 numbers right here. So I can see where I need to improve, what's doing, where I'm excelling at, all that good jazz. But yeah, that that's really all I do, you guys. I don't really do much, anything special. I do have a consignment sheet here. I need to keep track of my sales for consignment as well. That's it, y'all. All right, you guys. Well, that was everything. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it explains a little bit about like what I do, why I do what I do. I didn't go too much in depth about like the tax concept and all that. I do think you should just see your tax professional about that. Um, I went and saw one and it was it was good like she explained a lot of things to me that I didn't know which is why my spreadsheet is set up the way it's set up because I think the way I have it works well especially when you're trying to sell or when you're trying to file for your quarterly taxes if you guys do quarterly but um, yeah so obviously you know what might work for me might not work for you guys but this is, this is what I want to do so my hair is a mess gosh but right, you guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, you guys should definitely subscribe to my channel because I'm trying to get to 1,000. That would be great. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.